And here's another part of Nancy Drew, the final scene. And we are on day two, and I'm going to talk to Simone. Have you seen the posters? You know, Aren't they fabulous? She's the nicest person in the world, and I would love to talk to her all the time. That picture of Maya is the one from her press pass, isn't it? Yes. Thankfully, she's photogenic. What if she wasn't photogenic? Would you be less interested in helping her? Not necessarily. I just have to be more creative about my publicity if I couldn't use photos. Brady's out plastering those posters all over St. Louis and every podunk town for 50 miles. He's due back at any time, though, for the press conference. There's a press, press conference. conference. I've invited the press here today to report on Brady's commitment to solving this case. You know, a few questions, a few photo ops, no big deal. That funeral wreath was awful, wasn't it? What do you know about that wreath? I had it moved out front for the press conference. We want the press to know just how heartless this kidnapper is, don't we? Then it's all the more fabulous when Brady saves the day. I think wow. your phone's about okay. to ring. Ciao. Yeah, she's a good person. I'm gonna go back through here. I'm just gonna go back through here. Bye, Simone. Let me crawl into your closet. <laughs> See, she said Brady wasn't here, so that means that. Oh, okay. How are you holding <laughs> Let's up? Let's talk to her anyway. Um. Thanks for next. finding Maya's press pass. Where was it? I found it in the basement. Uh, I mean the balcony. <clears throat> it was the balcony. Uh-huh, yeah. Balcony, basement, whatever. It's just my friend's life that's in danger here. <laughs> Please, Nancy. It's not me. I guess I should have my eyes checked. I could have sworn that poster was all about you. It's Simone. She's relentless. I'm just a hostage on her runaway bus. Wow, really? <laughs> that's funny. I don't see any gun to your head. Just a wad of money dangling in front of your nose. It's more complicated than you think. Listen, I've got to get ready for this press conference. I'll talk to you later. Okay. You say so. So he's got a press conference. And he's got to do. And I'm not sure if the press conference will start now. But we will be able to listen in on it. And it's pretty funny. Is he going here? No, they're not ready yet. There's more flyers. <laughs> if you wanted to look at some more. Uh, I'm trying to think of what I need to do now. Um, I got this key. Can't do anything with that key. I talked to you, didn't I? I got oh. the number. I left it in the ticket booth. This woman isn't a Houdini herself. She's the widow of one of Houdini's cousins. But it couldn't hurt to give her a call. I'll get right on that. Oh. Oh. We can hear it. Let's proceed with, with good manner, shall we? <clears throat> Thank you all I love this for coming. Conference. I'm only sorry that the circumstances of our meeting are not more festive. Wouldn't it be nice if we were all gathered here today to revel in the blockbuster success of Brady Armstrong's new movie, Vanishing Destiny? Wouldn't we all prefer to turn our attention to record ticket sales and the squeals of delighted fans across the nation. But, alas, we have come together today over tragedy, not triumph. I've called this conference specifically to let you know, and I trust you will take it upon yourselves to inform the world, that Brady Armstrong will not rest. The greatest performance of his career will not be unveiled until Maya Nguyen. Oh. Hey, lady, you're breaking my heart. But isn't her name Maya Wynn? Thanks, <clears throat> okay. Until Maya Wynn is returned to her friends and family, safe and sound. Already, our real-life hero has searched this theater and uncovered important evidence. Already, he oh, has hello? driven 200 miles in a rent-a-car no, oh, no distributing missing posters to all the outer lying regions of this great city you see brady armstrong is a hero and 
a regular guy all rolled into one. Ooh, I'm swooning. Put a sock in it, Mr. Camouflage. <laughs> and now, without further ado, I'd like to open the floor up to questions. Uh, is it true that the girl was at the theater to interview uh, Brady Armstrong? What was the interview about? Mr. Charmstrong, <laughs> do you find your fans respond to you more in your chicken suit or in your curly wig? <laughs> Did uh, anyone hear her scream? Uh, Ms. Mueller, you're his agent. Uh, chicken suit or curly wig? <laughs> Any speculation on where the kidnapper's hiding her? Where did this funeral wreath come from? Isn't it a little unusual for a uh, movie star to help with a kidnapping like this? People, <laughs> one at a time. Brady. Well, with all of my experience on the silver screen, I feel well prepared to save the day in St. Louis. Do you think that kidnapper is violent? Mr. <laughs> Charmstrong, have you ever thought about growing a mustache? <laughs> it might really distinguish you. Is it true you're offering a reward for the facts leading to Maya's return? That's right. Autographed movie posters for anyone and everyone who comes forward with a decent lead. Uh, yes, is it true that uh, that Detective Nancy Drew is on the case? Yes, Nancy Drew is investigating. Yeah. Is she available for comment? Yeah, uh, it, it's a difficult situation. You see, Maya is a friend of Nancy's, and the personal connection, well, it may be clouding the detective's judgment. Wow, really? She's really on edge. Isn't anybody around here concerned about the welfare of this magnificent theater? There's more than one life at stake today, you know. Okay, I'm sorry. Hey, press people, over here. If you want the real story, talk to me. Sorry, Miss Mueller. You'll have your photo op in a moment. Yeah, over here. Down by my van. Okay, so that's it. But that was pretty funny. So we're going to call this Eustacia on drop-off. I got the number right here. I wonder if I can... <gasps> no, I was... Is that the shot number? No, yet, no. <laughs> that was an eight. Oh, no. Okay, okay, that's not gonna really work, so. <laughs> that screen doesn't work very well. Uh, this is gonna be a lot of them talking and little of me talking in this part, I'm afraid. So sad. So sad. Yes, hello. Hello, is this Eustacia and Dropoff? Who else would it be? Everyone else is um, there. Oh, Mrs. Andropov, I'm sorry to bother you. I'm trying to find out some information about Harry Houdini. Is it true that you're his cousin? Who wants to know? Oh, I beg your pardon. My name is Nancy Drew. I'm a detective working on a case in St. Louis. Harry was only my cousin by marriage, but my husband is dead, and so is Harry. <laughs> so I guess that makes me nobody's cousin. Love I'm researching Mr. Houdini's ownership of the Royal Palladium Theater. W would you know anything about this? He owned it. Half of it anyway. For a few months. Then he died. Does that help? Do you know what happened to his half? Did he sign it back over to J.J. Thompson? Return it to James Jehuzafat? Mr. Stupendous? Not on his life. Losing that man was Harry's greatest escape. Did someone in Houdini's family inherit the theater? Harry made a plan to give his half of the theater to someone he admired. A young magician, I assume. Perhaps a protege. I remember my husband telling me this. Can you tell me anything more? More? I'm 96 <laughs> over here. I don't exactly have time to burn. I know it was a long time ago, Mrs. Andropov, but this is terribly important. My friend is in danger, and finding out what happened to Houdini's half of the theater may be my only hope of saving her. Call the Library of Congress. Ask about the Houdini collection. There must be something in all of those letters. You tell that Sherman Trout, you stay, she said. You are not dead yet, <laughs> Sherman, so get up and make yourself useful. The Library of Congress. Oh, that cool. You don't happen to have 96. that number, do you? <laughs> should have this letter from Shermie around here somewhere. Shermie? Aww. Cat food coupons. Vincent Jack has a repair. There you stay. Here we go. Library of Congress, Washington, D.C. 202-555-5000. Thanks, Mrs. Andropov. You've been a great help. Save it for my funeral. <laughs> 
so now we're gonna call the Library of Congress. Yay, because I like talking on the phone. Yay. Manuscripts? Uh, I'm trying to reach Sherman Trout, please. Speaking. How may I help you? Hi, Mr. Trout. <laughs> My name is Nancy Drew. I'm a detective working on a case that involves Harry Houdini and the Royal Palladium Theater in St. Louis. Eustacia Andropov recommended I call you. Ah, uh, yes. Eustacia was most helpful to us when we were assembling our Houdini collection. I presume you'd like to have a look at it? Yes, please, Mr. Trout. I'm very interested. Fine. Well, you'll just need to register with the library when you get here and fill out a request for the materials you wish to view. When your request has been processed, the materials will be delivered to one of our reading rooms where you can view them. Mr. Trout, please let me explain. Unfortunately, there's no way for me to come to Washington, D.C. to do research. I'm hoping you could help me find the document. Well, Miss Drew, I'm sorry if you have logistical constraints, but please understand my own limitations. The Library of Congress currently holds over 40 million items, contained in 10,000 separate collections. It's the largest and most comprehensive library in the world. I simply don't have time to run research errands for the individual citizens. Mr. Trout, if I don't solve this case in a matter of hours, the building I'm standing in will be demolished, and an innocent 19-year-old girl, a friend of mine, may lose her life. You may be my only hope. Why is your friend in danger? She was kidnapped by someone desperate to save this building from demolition. And what can you possibly be hoping to find in the Houdini collection that would help matters? Mr. Houdini was part owner of the theater, and I'm trying to find out who inherited his half or what became of it when he died. I'm hoping Houdini might have discussed it somewhere in his personal documents. If I can prove that the current owner is not legally the full owner, then maybe I can get the demolition stopped and save Maya. I see. Well, this sounds urgent. I suppose I can take a look. You sound it like you're such a really help, urgent Trout. to help. If you find anything, could you overnight it to me at the Royal Palladium? Well, I certainly can't send you the document itself. It's a historical artifact now. But I could send you a slide. What's the street address there, if I find anything? It's 1330 Washington Avenue, St. Louis, Missouri, 63101. Please send the package in care of Nicholas Falcone or myself, Nancy Drew. I can't tell you how grateful I am, Mr. Trout. You might just be a lifesaver. Miss Drew, I assure <laughs> you, Sherman Trout is a man of his word. Thanks so much. Bye. Okay, so that guy could not talk any slower if he tried. Oh, I said sun door twice. Uh, okay. So we're gonna do some magicking. First thing we're gonna do, everybody's outside for the press conference, which means that we can snoop. So first we're gonna snoop through Simone's stuff. Yes. Open this door. What has she got in here? Oh, she's got five pin, eyelash color, some makeup stuff. Oh, <laughs> I got too frantic with my clicking. Anyway, if we got a bobby pin, I want other stuff. Let's go through her bag. Yes, hairbrush, camera. <laughs> so that's what that's what Falcon meant by chicken suit or curly wig because of these. Oh, 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 oh my goodness! You, f what are you doing? <laughs> taking pictures everywhere wow okay and um here's simone's wallet jake's talent farm blah 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 mama centric's wellness garden uh these are not really important chiropractic ezekiel's martini and sushi bar mm, sushi. georgie bear that's I'm assuming, like, a boyfriend or something? I don't know. Anyway. <gasps> Ginger's 24-hour flower rama Funeral wreath. Stop. <gasps> oh my goodness, Simone bought- She paid $300 for that wreath. And that's probably, like, chump change, sure, for real. Oh. 
it's not actually like a code. You just have to like get all the. Do you have to? Is that how you do it? How am I supposed to do this? When is it? Like the numbers are just changing. I don't understand. Oh wait. There's like a gnat that keeps flying in front of my face. And I'm getting very frustrated. Uh, if I do that, and then do that, and then do that. Oh, I did it! I don't know how I did it, but I did it! I don't know how I did it exactly, but I did it! Okay, so let's look through her stuff really quick. Very quickly. See Scoop Nuyen. I mean, not Nuyen. I said what exactly what someone said. Scoop Win. Breaking news. Dear Mr. Armstrong, for stars, I'm a huge fan. I've been seeing your movies since I was like 14. To this day, I still think your best performance was in Lie Like a Rug, but who knows? Maybe Vanishing Destiny will top it. I'm in college at Washington University now, and I'm planning to go to the your premiere at the Royal Palladium. I'm contacting you because I'm hoping to interview you for an article I'm writing for my school paper. I'm sure you're very busy, but could I stop by your dressing room this afternoon of the premiere? I only have a few questions. The interview would only take 20 minutes or so. What do you think? Please write back. That was Maya. This is for Georgie Bear. Can I? Oh, next message. Hi, Maya. I'd be happy to meet with you so long as we provide any photos of me for the article and the full page after Destiny in your school paper. Um, pull a few strings of getting the thing in, whatever. Thank you, man. I've missed the deadline to deadline. Sorry. Um, yay. So this is, uh, just some more people. Um, doesn't matter. That's the one we needed to go. So, Simone did the funeral wreath, and she also is the one who set up the interview for between Brady and um, Maya. So that's really, really suspicious of her, isn't it? 